All right, everyone, welcome back. Figured I'm way overdue for giving you guys an update on the boat project, so here we go. I'm gonna show you guys some of the stuff that I've collected for this project and kind of walk you through kind of what I'm thinking. So first, sorry about uh, the delay in these videos. My garage has been a mess and I've been a busy man. So here's the steering wheel that, I'm, that I got for my, my boat. I think that thing's gonna look awesome. Here's a bus bar for running some uh, electronics in my boat. If you guys want to know about boat building, this book right here, it's pretty much a step-by-step -step guide to everything you ever wanted to know and more. For my steering wheel, I got this Sea Star tilt steer helm. Just got a little lever there on the bottom, so just like your steering wheel on your car, you can adjust the tilt. This is so if I'm standing up and operating my boat, I can adjust the tilt of the steering wheel forward so it's a little bit more comfortable. And if I'm sitting down, I can have it a little bit more like this so it's more comfortable like that. So definitely a must. If you guys are building a boat and you guys are thinking you're going to run some skinny water, get that. It'll be much more comfortable for you in the long run. Then I got this little Sea Star switch panel. Um, I kind of just wrote some stuff on there just to kind of get an idea of what I'm going to wire to what. This one has, um, it's like a circuit breaker, so you can reset it. The idea behind that is I don't want to be in the middle of nowhere and then blow a fuse and then not have a fuse in my boat or something. Um, so it's just much more reliable to have a uh, circuit breaker type where if it does pop one, you can reset it, be on your way. All right, in addition to that, I got some cosmetic things. Here's some LED blue waterproof lights that I'm going to run underneath the swim deck. That way what my water jet spray is gonna look blue, which will be rad, especially at night when I'm you know playing around. So that'll be fun. And then in addition to that, we got a bow eye. These are all cast aluminum. So I got these two for the back. There's two of these big guys, these little tie downs. And then you got a two, two loop bow eye right there. I'm really not sure if I'm gonna use these or not actually. They are pretty beefy, but I don't know. I, I'm still undecided about those. They're, I don't know. I just have mixed feelings about them. So anyway, keep going. All right, so we got a, Perco makes some quality marine grade stuff. This is a fuel fill cap. Um, let's see if I can get this one handed, but essentially you can open it like that. It's gonna be flush mounted to uh, the side of my boat. And this will go into my fuel cell. So you can just uh, close it up. Looks pretty good. Lots of uh, marine companies are using these on their boats. Like Prodigy Boats, they use a lot of these. And another Perco product. This is a battery selector switch. That way I can have two, two batteries um, operating, you know, my starter and my equipment like, uh, you know, depth finder, fish finder, lights, stuff like that. You don't want to have your battery that's running your boat and your starter also running all your equipment. Because if you have a nice long day fishing, running all your equipment, runs your battery down, the next thing you know, you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. So you want to have two batteries. So that's what uh, the selector switch is for. So I got two of these cast aluminum uh, cleats. Um, again, I'm not really sure how I feel about these. They seem kind of small, to be honest. I might get some bigger ones or maybe use these for other, you know, less uh, critical areas of the boat just for additional tie-off for things. So, anyway, there's those. I might order some more. I just wanted to get two just for the start just to see how they would look and kind of get a feel for those. So, I ordered two of these. I don't know where the other one is, but I figure... Showing you one is enough. Obviously, if I'm running two batteries, I want to know the battery levels on each battery. Um, but just a little voltmeter tells you how much juice your battery's got. So that way, if you're running low, you know, switch to the other battery or make sure you're charging it or what have you. So anyway, that's a quality one. Uh, I'll uh, add links to all this stuff, by the way, in the, in the description of my video. So if you guys want to buy these things, you can. So this is one of my favorite things I bought for the boat. This is the Sea Star Marine uh, dual lever flush mount controls for it. I mean, look how good that thing looks. Looks awesome. This one here controls the throttle. 
This one here controls your reverse bucket and neutral. So you can put it in reverse, neutral, whatever. This is your throttle. Just I love the way that thing looks. I'll have it mounted flush into the dash like that. So thing's awesome. This guy's a little dusty. It actually came off my last boat, uh, but this is a Minn Kota onboard battery charger and it can do up to three batteries. And it'll also give you a readout, although usually where this thing's mounted, I'm not usually looking at where it's charging at. Usually this thing's, you know, in the back or somewhere kind of hidden. Um, but it will tell you kind of where your batteries are at and if they're charging and it'll tell you, you know, check connection. And uh, this thing's just awesome. I've had it for a long time and hopefully it'll fit in the new boat and keep my batteries nice and charged. And if you guys have never seen how one of those things work, basically that unit mounts into the boat and it's connected to all your batteries. And then there's a plug where you can basically run an extension cord to plug into that unit. And then that unit charges all the batteries that are connected to it. So that's kind of how that works. This is a Duralast battery. I'm not really sure if it's the best for my application, but I needed something in a pinch to make sure my motor ran and to, you know, test electrics and electrical systems and things like that. So I bought this thing. This is my drive shaft that I pulled out. Um, it's going to have to get shortened to fit my intake. So that line right there is where it's going to get cut. And then I got to send it off to get re-splined. And honestly, I've been procrastinating on this for way too long. And I was saw it sitting here in the garage today and I just really need to get this thing going so I can put everything together. Not exactly a boat part, but definitely essential for building boats. I bought a Miller 211 and I also bought this guy right here. A Miller Spoolmate 150, this is a spool gun. And I've never spool gunned anything in my entire life, so I'm gonna go play around with this thing sometime soon and uh, make sure I got that dialed in. However, I also have an Everlast, well, I'll just show it to you. I also have this Everlast 255 EXT TIG welder, which I'm very proficient at. Um, so worst case scenario, I can TIG a lot of my boat, but I figure for the sake of speed and just getting things kind of glued together, then the Miller was gonna be kind of a little bit quicker and make things a little bit easier, so. Anyway, that's pretty much it. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering, hey man, it's been a while, where's your boat at? Well, I have been kind of in touch with Sitka, um, Sitka en Engineering, and we've kind of collabed and kind of designed a new boat that you guys haven't seen before. I'll throw some photos of it and some uh, little animations of it on this video right here. So basically that's kind of the design. Um, I wanted to run shallow water primarily. I wanted to be able to have it big enough to be you know, family friendly and take my friends out and my dogs out. There is gonna be a swim deck on the back and then a kind of a shallow recessed front bow deck. That way I'm not knocking stuff off the edge. It's not so deep that, you know, I'm not really wanting to put coolers and stuff. I mostly just wanna walk up there. I'll probably have um, some hatches and things like that so I can put things down underneath where my feet would go. Um, but that's kind of the design right now. I'm just coming up with some money. I do have a little baby on the way. And so a lot of my money that normally would go to these fun projects is now going towards, you know, my family, my house and things like that. So I'm just kind of saving money as I go. Hopefully pretty soon I can pull the trigger on that and get all my pieces cut and, um, and I can go pick them up. Because Sika Engineering is located down in Grants Pass, which is about an hour or two um, south of where I'm at. So really, I can just drive down there, pick them up. And then the cool guys down there have agreed to help me put it together, which would be pretty rad. Um, and then once everything's kind of welded together, then the fun starts. I can bring it back to my house, start doing wiring, put the um, intake and mount the motor, weld up some motor mounts you know, all that fun stuff. So I know you guys are probably getting, uh, 
you know, dying from anticipation for wanting to see this thing. I apologize. I guarantee I'm dying more of anticipation for this than you guys are. So in the meantime, I've been trying to make sure that I have all the parts to put this thing together once it's here. Uh, once everything's put together, I can just like really hammer it out and not have to worry about ordering a bunch of parts and things like that. I pretty much have everything. Um, I still need a um, Teleflex steering cable and reverse um, cable. And so, but those are kind of dependent on how uh, the length of it is dependent on the boat. And so I really wanted to wait until the boat was physically here at my house. I can do some precise measuring. That way I don't have excess cable or not enough cable, worst case scenario. So that's why I don't have the steering cables yet. Um, aside from that, I have pretty much all the hardware. There's probably some through hole fittings, um, some water lines, things like that that I need to buy still. Um, but aside from that, I'm pretty much in good shape. Um, there's some other technical things that I need to kind of troubleshoot. I'll kind of go over those real quick. All right, so here's my motor again. I did get a little air intake for my turbo, or excuse me, supercharger. That way I'm not sucking in a bunch of dirt and stuff like that from the surrounding air. Um, so normally these motors come with the iRod system, which is basically an electric reverse. So Yamaha made it so you could just pull a little lever and then it would switch it into reverse and then boom, you'd be in reverse. When I bought this thing, it doesn't come with that iRide system. Um, the box, the little electric box that comes with it, just I didn't have it, which is fine because I didn't plan on running with that anyway. I wanted a manual reverse. However, the ECU still thinks that it's there, so it's not going to run until I basically reprogram the ECU into believing that that thing is not currently hooked up. So I'm thinking about running this thing over to um, MotoJet over in Idaho and see if they'd be willing to help me. Or I got to find some other Yamaha dealer that has a um, the software to reprogram this thing so it'll be running. So that's kind of a hurdle. Um, Let's see what else. So one more boat related thing real quick before we sign off. Um, this motor, when I got it, it was all in a bunch of pieces basically. And so I went through it, changed out all the gaskets on it, um, replaced a lot of the hardware and uh, did redid the timing and everything in it too. So now it should be primed and ready to get put into a boat. So as soon as that thing gets built, then uh, make some motor mounts and throw it in there. Another thing, this thing didn't come with any water lines to it. And so I was thinking about ordering those myself, but it might be easier just taking it someplace and just say, hey, can you guys do this for me? Just cause it seems like kind of a pain in the ass and I just don't really want to deal with it. Um, not hard by any means, I don't think. I mean, it's basically a couple of Y connectors and some hose, uh, but yeah, I just don't want to deal with it, honestly. So um, anyway, that's kind of my boat project update. Uh, hopefully next time I post one, I'll actually have uh, the boat parts and hopefully I'm welding it together and, uh, you know, things will be a lot more further along. Another thing that is um, not exactly boat related, but I've also done a lot of work on the trailer. Um, so I've taken the old bunks off. It used to be a jet ski trailer and now it's a boat trailer. And so I've also taken off the lights. I put in some LED, I think they're like six inch oval LEDs, they're waterproof, wired all those in, painted it. Um, and aside from that, that's pretty much where we're at. I do need to weld up some new bunks for it and kind of get the, um, the trailer winch, now all that stuff kind of mounted up permanently. But aside from that, we're in good shape. And really just, I'm really looking forward to putting this thing together, guys. I know it's been a long project and I'm dying to have a boat again, hit the water. And uh, I just am really looking forward to it. So thanks for the support and watching these videos. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please reach out. Um, I'll help any way I can. So, all right. Take care, guys.